in this episode, we are going to tackle an interesting aspect called polar moment of inertia. Polar moment of inertia. We've already talked about moment of inertia. That's the ability of a body to resist bending. And now we are going to add polar to whatever we have learned. So straight away, let's look at the analysis. Now, when we talk about polar moment of inertia, it is an analysis we are going to do on members to see how they resist twisting. Moment of inertia, we considered ability to resist bending. So polar moment of inertia is, let me write, polar moment of inertia. Ability to resist twisting. Now, we have three axes. We know that we have the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. Are we okay? So, this is going to give us the three dimension of any plane figure. And here we are going to look at how or how the body is going to behave along the third axis. Do we get it? So first it is the moment of inertia about the axis Z, the third axis, which is perpendicular to the other two axes. This is very simple. We know moment of inertia. We have derived all the formulas from the previous episode, how we can calculate moment of inertia for each figure. And now we are interested in polar moment of inertia. When you check the videos on moment of inertia, we have what we call the IXX. That means moment of inertia about the X axis. We have IY. And that is also polar or moment of inertia about the Y axis. And what if it is a 3D body that we are interested in finding the moment of inertia about the third axis Z? That is where we bring in the polar moment of inertia. So here we are going to find the twisting ability of what a body about the axis Z. We can represent the polar moment of inertia by the letter J or we can also represent it by IP. So IP will be polar moment of inertia, right? And J. But I will prefer we stick to the J because in twisting and in bending, we are going to encounter this J so that you don't confuse yourself. We are not going to use the IP, but we are going to stick to the J. So J, which is the polar moment of what? Inertia of a body we can prove, but here, let's write down the formula. Anytime you are finding the polar moment of inertia of a body, it is equal to the moment of inertia of the body about the X axis plus the moment of inertia of the body about the Y axis. It makes sense, right? Yes, because we are interested in whatever is happening on the third axis Z. Therefore, we can add whatever happened at the Y and what happened on the X. So this is the simple formula that we have, that the polar moment of inertia is equal to moment of inertia about the X axis plus the moment of inertia about the Y axis. And our unit is going to be in millimeter raised to the power 4 you get that. Now let's make some analysis of important figures. Let's consider some circular shafts for a solid circular shaft. When we have a solid circular shaft that we are to determine its polar moment of inertia, how do we go by that? First, I will always write my polar moment of inertia, IP or J, 
is the summation of the various moments of inertia about the various axes, which is x and y. Do you get it? So when I'm talking about a circular shaft, this is what we have. So we are going to have the y axis and we are also going to have the x axis. Let's call this as the diameter of the shaft D, or we can make it a capital D as the diameter of the shaft. So from this equation, I'm going to find the polar moment of inertia. We saw that the moment of inertia of a shaft about the x axis is given as pi d4 on 64. This was discussed in the previous episode when we were talking about moment of inertia. And also, if we want to find the moment of inertia of this about the y, it is also the same as pi d4 on 64. Do we get that? Therefore, we can say that the j, which is the polar moment of inertia or IP, can be summation of the two about the x and about the y. Therefore, I can say this on 64 plus pi d4 on 64. Do you get the understanding? The summation of the moment of inertia about the x and y axis. So this is mathematics. We know that when we sum this, we are going to get two times pi d4 on 64. Now two will cancel itself and cancel this as well, 32. Therefore, we are going to get j as pi d4 on 32. So for a solid circular shaft, this is the polar moment of inertia, the formula. You can just put in the diameter and you'll get the value. Are we okay? Just as we have moment of inertia for all these written down, this is also the derived formula for the circular shaft, the J, right? So now let's look at a situation where we have a hollow shaft. Why am I focusing on shaft? Because most of our analysis is going to be based on shafts, right? So it's better you know the J for any shaft, a hollow shaft or a solid circular shaft. Now let's look at hollow shaft. So this is going to be a hollow shaft, meaning there is a space inside this shaft. Now we have to find the moment of inertia about the x and add it to the moment of inertia about the y as the formula states. Now let's call the diameter as what d for the outer part as d, the larger one as d, and call the diameter of the inner hole as what small d, right? Now from the same analysis that our g is going to be moment of inertia about the x plus moment of inertia about the y. But here, what do we see? That the diameter is affected. There is a deduction of what? A small d from the entire diameter. This is the only thing changing from the diagram. From when you look at the solid circular shaft, there is no hole inside it. So we are using a d. But when you come to the hollow, there is a small d being what? Subtracted or taken out from the larger d. Therefore, we are going to put in this big d minus small d right okay so in that case we are going to have our ixs as pi and this is going to be big d4 minus small d4 everything on 64 plus since they are the same another pi big d4 minus small d4 on 64 this is going to give us 2 pi big D4 minus small d raised to the power 4 on 64. 
32 we'll go here 1 and still here 32 and this is going to be pi big d4 minus small d4 everything on 32 so you can see that there is similarities between a hollow shaft and a circular solid shaft just that we are going to subtract the small diameter or the taking out diameter from the entire big diameter do we get that so anytime you have a, a question or analysis where you are considering a hollow shaft you have to use this expression for your polar moment of inertia and if it is a solid circular shaft you use this phase as your polar moment of inertia it is not difficult this is just summation of various moments of inertia about x and y so if i give you any plane figure to find its polar moment of inertia just find the moment of inertia of that figure about the x and y then you sum them to get your polar moment of inertia this is interesting we will solve questions on that so that you will get the practical aspects of it thank you for watching this episode Please subscribe to the channel, like the video and drop your comments.